fits perfectly in our composition. Mm -hmm. I think having Ethereum in the team then also changed up that drafting slightly. Change it up just slightly here, and let's go ahead and see how the drafting will break down as we're going to our next battleground. It's going to be Battlefield of Eternity Expert going for the choice here. And it's so interesting to me that we have teams leaning more and more towards picking the battleground after losing a match. That n basically never happened in Phase 1. And now in Phase 2, when you feel under pressure, you all of a sudden start to lean a little bit more towards the battleground just simply because we have teams trying to get certain drafts on certain maps and having some strategies prepared. You can see it with Team Liquid going into Dragonshire here, even though it was our first map. Now all of a sudden we have Expert just pushing towards Battlefield, which shakes things sure. up, of course, as a two, as a very team fight heavy two lane map. And yes, it's going to be awesome. I, I, I can't wait. This is going to be great. It's going to be good, man. All about the team fights here. We've seen a lot of variety in the past here from Team Expert. It's funny because I go to BOE and I always wonder, what are they going to run into? The thing is, we've seen so many different strategies from them. We had Probius at the past. We've had Chromia mixed up in the time. We've even had Ragnaros play by them in a long time ago. So we'll see what's going to happen on BOE. One of their go-to strategies, that was a while ago, of course, was with a lot of Kerrigan players that they played here. Super aggressive, and that's half a year ago, more than that probably. But that was always super fun to see just because they were so aggressive with it. Since then, meta has changed, Kerrigan has fallen off, and uh, they also changed their style slightly. But for now, we have Uther banned out, so Liquid would probably be happy to get Genji. They would be happy here. Does Team Expert think that banning Genji might be worth it for a ban for them? Because they give up Tassadar. Would Team Liquid move into that Tassadar? We've seen them dabble it in the past. I mean, they definitely could. I'm not with Team Liquid. It's weird these days because they have their their own style. Mm -hmm. Fnatic talked about it. Quarknix has been mentioning quite a bit how he feels that Team Liquid has problems drafting in the meta right now, or had at least. And if they get a good draft, they are always a team that you have to be really afraid of since they just have the skills and also the coordination to make it happen. But that was one of the questions that a lot of the other teams had, where they were saying. Is Liquid really making the right choices in the draft here? So I'm not sure if they would go into the Tassadar, but right now with Oriel being banned out, this is targeting the healers heavily. And Team Liquid most likely thinking about the Genji here. But if you don't, if you go Genji, then your opponent can can pick another good support away from you, and then you have to take the leftovers. Yeah, I mean, even Tex Expert could answer back with Tassadar Tracer right away if they grab the Genji. They would be able to get that slotted in here. It's good on BOE. So Team Liquid taking a lot of time here thinking about what they want to pick up. Do they grab that Genji? And in the past, they've done it. They picked up Genji a lot. They go for the Tassadar. Okay, so they're adjusting. We are back to the Tassadar, man. <laughs> this is it, Kaldor. This is our uh. life. <laughs> All right, so Tassadar. I mean, he. Th the cool thing about him is definitely the, uh, the amount of plays that we see enabled with the Force Wall. Yep. That's pretty awesome. Shad has showcased that a lot. We've seen a lot of them when they need the damage head into Archon instead, but good force wall plays are definitely pretty fun to see. How much surgical. Mane did it earlier on this battleground. Yeah, exactly. How much isolation you get with them and then getting the kill. But now that Tassadar is taken and we have two supports banned, the question is what is Expert going to commit to? This early, you could say, okay, let's, for example, you want to take Rhaegar, let, let's take him immediately. It already shuts down the Tracer play. We've seen Tracer so many times today, not only in our first series, we've seen uh, Tracer being played on Battlefield of Eternity and Tomb of the Spider Queen. But now Expert could run into a Tracer play on the side of Liquid, but they themselves have to ask themselves now, okay, do we go into the healer? And yes, they do. So they take Rhaegar away, Vala is taken with it. That's already a lot of clear against the Immortal. You have the Lightning Bond as an option, and you have the Arrow build for Vala. And you take a good healer away from Team Liquid. And if Liquid doesn't take the second healer now, you have the chance of banning an additional one out. And the healers that we look at this point, Karazim, Brightwing, Malfurion is still around. Yeah. Trying to think, I don't think you go down into Genji at all now with Team Liquid having Tassadar. Because Tassadar and Genji together doesn't seem like a very good pair. You don't really get mm. the strength that you want to have. You get some saving opportunities. Team Liquid, what will you be moving into? A new bracket still up and floating around. Let's not forget Illidan. They have played a lot with True. Illidan, trying to uh, give Dartmoor an opportunity to really shine here. So uh, that can be definitely the choice. I mean, one of the traditional picks, if you want to go into an Illidan, would then try and get a Lunara later on. Normally, that's the Oriole that is going to be paired with. That's not possible in this case. But you still have healers that can fill the role. And they go into the Tracer. 
Once again, Tracer plus the Nubarak. So this is the fourth time in the fifth game today that we have Tracer being played. Massive focus on her in the Tassada combo. Yeah, with Tassadar in here, Tracer is going to just go up and pick priority. If you see Tassadar on your side, consider picking up Tracer in your HL games because she is just such a good combo mixed in with there. Illidan will be banned out. Again, you talked about it in the first series, but here, Illidan and Tracer just have that synergy together where they're able to have the uh, benefits of what a Tassadar can bring to the field, able to get the lockdowns and the kills. So Illidan being banned out from the expert to make sure that does not occur. Team Liquid now thinking about their second ban. What would they like to get rid of? Obviously, you don't want to deal with any pressure coming your way, but there's no immediate Immediate bands that pop out for Trace anymore. As mentioned, Varian has fallen off pretty dramatically for a lot of our teams. If any, I could definitely see Team Expert trying to commit to it though. True. To try to lock her down here. But I also want to highlight once more in this series for Team Liquid, it's only the win that counts. If Team Liquid loses here, Dignitas and Expert advance. Score doesn't matter. Liquid has to win the best of five. So. Yeah. If they win the best of five, then they are definitely through. They they made it to the Western Clash. And then it comes down to the score, which teams uh, advance with them and Fnatic, who ends up in a tiebreaker. But Liquid needs to win the series. They are off to a good start. They have the 1-0. But Expert are the ones that are going to definitely try and throw a bit of a, a curveball here right now. So for now, ban out on the Medivh. AD already being targeted here, but let's see. Okay, so we have the double support. Brightwing being chosen. Liquid is starting to run out of options. Karazim is still available to them. And the Sonya for the top lane. That was the one worry that I had here. Leaving Sonya up to the ban phase. We've been seeing Sonya from a thorough often. Leap always being picked up from Team Expert as they seem to just have the coordination down to focus down on target. Every leap that comes in, they usually get a kill. I like their pressure against the Immortal too. Yeah. It's really solid. Sonya and Vala plus Rega with the uh, Lightning Shield. So Liquid has also tools that they have to respect at least. Brightwing with the Polymorph against Tracer. If you go into the Poison Spear and Sonya connects with Tracer, it's also a lot of damage. So there's definitely a decent amount of output that you have with all of this. You can go Emerald Wind and just have another disengage available to you on Isolation Tool, especially after Cocoon hits, for example, if Brightwing is not the target. So Liquid has to round out that draft. And the biggest question for me right now is which support are they going to use? Are they going to head into Karazim or is it going to be a different healer for them? Let's see what we're going to get here. Greymane also still in the field if they would like to get another auto attacker to help out in the yep. DPS. It's going to be the Malfurion okay. into Malfeel. No Greymane. No Greymane. On Battlefield of Eternity. That is interesting. And there's the ETC play now. Okay, a couple of interrupts, not too many against the mosh pit. Don't think you have to go for the global, but he could. But with no cleanse from Malfurion, power slides are just that much more effective if you're able to get in. Grab Malfiel, grab Malfir. Both are easily killable between Sonya and uh, Vala. I don't know, man. I look over to uh, BOE and I kind of like what Expert has. Yeah, I like what Expert has a lot. You can, uh, when Malfiel jumps in and starts to pop his ult, you can disengage with the Emerald Wind and, mm -hmm. and just like try or isolate him, try and isolate him uh, or simply disengage, try and burst him here. So I like that quite a lot. On uh, the, uh, Malfiel just comes online a bit later and mm -hmm. with the draft that X Team Expert has, they have so much pressure also against the Immortal that I think if they play it right, they could try and snowball it early on. So, I like what they have a lot. Team Liquid's draft is not weak by any means, especially if they can head into the later stage of the game. With Malthiel, they should have a really good team fight. But overall, they don't have too many interrupts against Sonya once she starts swinging. And I like what Expert has a bit more. Well, let's see if Expert can get a tie series here against Team Liquid, or if Team Liquid continue to move forwards and get a 2-0 run in. It's going to be Battlefield of Eternity between our two teams. The game starts up and we have map number two between Team Liquid and Team Expert. Liquid in the lead with Splendor on Malfurion to the left. Blumbi on Anubarak. We're currently seeing Hazops on Tassada and Darkmok on Tracer. Last but not least, Nurok is going to play the solo lane. He's on Malthiel. Let's find out if Team Liquid can take game number two. Well, the experts are tying up the series. Team Expert on the right side in the red. Nick playing Vala, Bad Biddy on ETC, Athuro and Sonya, Kirsten on Rhaegar, and ADRD will be playing Brightwing. And it will be the Hungering Arrow build for Battlefield of Eternity. So we're looking for those races. Chunk them down while you can. Get that level 4 quest done as soon as possible. You're going to have a lot of fighting happening in the middle of the map. 
So once again, Liquid, they have to win the entire series if they want to advance to the West End Clash. And at the same time, there is still a scenario in which Team Liquid with a 3-0 against Team Expert could force a three-way tie breaker between Dignitas, Trick Esports and Team Expert. If Expert wins a single map, they would at least avoid the three-way tiebreaker. Now well, let's see how this is going to end now. Again, it's the Tracer once more. A massive focus on her here today. Fourth game, fourth time that Tracer has picked in the combo with Tassadai in our fifth game of the day. It's always interesting how one hero can come in and suddenly you see another being played very often. Tracer just benefiting from that Tassadar. So Tassadar will continue to keep her alive. Looking into our soul lane, as mentioned, Malfiel will be up there being played by Nurok. He's facing off against a Thorough, and a Thorough is quickly becoming one of the best solo laners in the game. So we'll watch and see if he can handle the pressure that comes in from Mal. Yeah, we have some fantastic solo laners in Europe for sure. And uh, Ethero is definitely up at the top of the list together with Wubi and a few others. Good kill outside the bot lane against Tracer. So a team expert starting to apply pressure here. And especially Bad Benny is going to be a massive problem. With his slide, he can always put a bit of isolation onto Tracer, get the stun in. And if the rest of the team is on the same page, then you get a lot of free damage. Even if you can't confirm the kill, the damage output alone is already putting you on the back foot. I just want to say, I really like this ETC pick simply because there's no major burst on the opposing side except for that pulse bomb that could be coming in. ETC, one of those heroes, is a little bit squishier because he got changed a few patches ago. But in this lineup, he's able to handle that front lane pretty well. He won't be able to dance around too much when Malthiel comes online, but him being able to power slide in, not deal with that Malfurion, not having a cleanse, and not having to face too much pressure like a Lee Ming or a Grey Ming is very good for him. ETC is definitely a hero that can have a massive impact, and he has, in my personal opinion, from all the tanks, a pretty high skill ceiling because he has a massive impact if played well, especially if you are on top with your positioning. But at the same time, he can also counter really easily by good bursts. So on this level, you have to make sure that you are not making a single misstep or you will be taken out. But you can have a huge impact on how your team is doing. So right now, already the pressure down here. Bad Benny takes a lot of free damage. Here comes the Pulse Bomb. And Bad Benny barely surviving. Helped out by Kirsten and AD already as Tracer was looking for a kill. That spell shield there that comes in from Brightwing, her latest change helping out in that pulse bomb coming out yeah. and making sure that he did not get blown up. So he had the resistance naturally in his trait, had the spell shield that came in from Brightwing and her pixie dust, and of course the double healers, keeping him alive. But however, Kirsten on Rhaegar might not be as lucky as he's locked down, but no burst comes out and he'll get away. Great coordination from Liquid. I'm really liking it. Every single time they start with a stun or they want to lock someone down, Malfurion is there with the runes, as he should be. So the coordination of them today is absolutely top-notch, at least up to this point. And this is what we talked about. Who shows up today? Which Team Liquid do we get? Which Team Expert? And right now, both of these teams are showing really good communication here. And we have also, at the same time, Nick now just working towards his own level 4 quest talent, currently at 15 extra damage. While Team Liquid is doing well here on the Immortal in defense, they did miss out on experience. As Sonya pushed in that top lane and got an entire wave, and you see the results here. Five and a quarter to four and three quarters. Bad Benny taking pressure once again, but saved by ADRD and Kirsten. He's able to power slide as well and get that resistance baked into his kit, and he'll survive another pulse bomb. ADRD is doing actually really well against the Tracer ults here. I'm liking it. The impact of Brightwing is fantastic in this set up and just look at Tracer down she goes that Benny waiting for an opportunity and he gets it moves in immediately and it doesn't only result in one kill they get the double as they drop a Nuburak three kills against zero for team expert and they get the lead in the halftime show in the motor race and Caldor we have a match on our hands yeah. here as team expert in game number two coming out swinging working in some damage here and even showing off the cow here as his ETC is coming here all the stake is on the line for both our teams <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. Um, medium rare for me, please. <laughs> All right, so the first Immortal grabbed here. Look at that shield. That's a pretty big shield for the first Immortal. And granted, you're able to deal with that pretty well, but look over at Team Liquid. What do they have for defense? They have their Malfiel and their Tracer, but it still could be difficult for them with an ETC lingering on the outside. And that's the problem that I had heading into the game, because Malfiel is this massive force that can give you so much value in the later stages. But right now, what does he actually offer? I don't think it's really enough. Expert could try and just run away with this game. They have a level lead already, as the Immortal is just now starting to be active down here. They have the level lead. We are seeing Nick on 25 extra damage on his quest talent, and they just barrel through that wall without any problems whatsoever. Not sure if they can get the entire fort, but they will get a huge amount of damage, and they get a kill even. Malfiel 
is down and look at Darkmog. He barely survives here, needs to move away too. Team Expert is dominating this early game. You ask what Malfeo offers here, and he offers death. Sadly, it's for himself <laughs> here as he gets picked it's off. It's his own, yeah. Yeah, the four being killed off as well, and Team Expert just walking through it, taking it out, and they had Sony at the top the entire two, focusing, forcing against Nubarak. And a Nubarak, while he can hold lanes, he's not going to handle a Sonya. Look at that wave being pushed in here. Turret got broke down, and there's no ammo left there as well. Yeah, Malfeo is not death. He's dead at this point. Has a bit of a grammar <laughs> problem, I'd say. 4-0 in kills, and <laughs> it's a two-level lead. Not quite, but close. Level 7 versus level 9 in just a few seconds. And that worries me for Team Liquid. Again, it's the snowball I mentioned during draft. If 10 hits now for Expert during the second Immortal phase, what do you do if you're Team Liquid? How do you cope with this? If your opponent has the heroic ability and can just simply force you into any kind of fight that they want, how do you deal with it? If you lose the second Immortal and it pushes in while the experts have 10, you have a massive problem on your hand. Yeah, you have to soak two lanes, but you also have to put maybe three people in the Immortal to make sure you can defend, but your defense is pretty lackluster unless you get the stuns from the Immortals. It'll be scary, and that 10 is coming around the corner. Blumby goes in to force a fight before 10 does occur. We're going to have Team Liquid trying to get a kill here, and they do. They snipe Vala. Nice. The kill against Vala is great for them at this point. So they are starting to make a bit of a comeback, and it was at the perfect moment in time, too. Just before the experts hit 10. So that was really important for Liquid to at least get this kill. Gives them a bit of momentum. And they're trying to use it to drop a few towers so that they can close the gap in experience. But Sonya is already working on the camp. Tacit at the bot lane, also soaking more XP. But we should have the next Immortal announced pretty soon. And Vala, of course, is now also back and on their way back to the top lane. That's the thing, is you mentioned a momentum, but is it enough? And yeah. it's not looking like it. With nine about to hit, Team Expert in full control, getting top lane pushing. And remember, that wall has been broken up earlier by Sonya. So these mercenaries, if they are not dealt with, will take out that fort. And meanwhile, there is an Immortal spawning right now. Team Liquid has to make some plays. Yeah, Liquid. I'm not even sure if they have to make the plays. It feels to me more that they have to try and just simply soak and defend with a 10. Because the halftime show has already been reached wow. easily. And there is absolute... <laughs> 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 okay, so Bad Benny uh, yeah, runs into that, stands uh, in the I've stun. been there. You, know, you can't, you can't yeah, hate yeah, too much. It, it happens. But right now, I don't think you can really do too much. They defend the top lane and they need to, but this is going to be an immortal that is nearly at 100% shield. They just have to get 10 so they can defend with it. That's the important part now. You have to give up the objective. There's no way you can fight for it. But you have to get 10 so that when the Immortal pushes in, you can at least fight and defend with your heroic abilities. And they do. They are about to get 10 here. One more minion or two will be just enough. Team Liquid hits the level 10 and are able to put themselves in a spot where they can fight. They do have Cocoon, they have Twilight Dream, and they do have Tortured Souls. So if they get into a fight on a particular target, land it down, they can snipe a member. Let's see if they can pull it off here as the Immortal starts to charge forward. Yeah, the Immortal is there. Extra damage on Valas by 50% now, so halfway done with the quest talent. Already, Nurok goes in. Emerald Wind, as expected, comes out. But the pressure against Ethero, nice. Sonya goes back, and Liquid really forcing the issue away from the Immortal. But that gave also Immortal itself time to work on the fort. And this fort is going to fall. Expert is back with the double support. They are healing up once more. And that was a lot of resources committed by Liquid. They didn't go for the Twilight Dream. But they didn't get a kill here, which is the more important part. But they may only lose a fort here instead of their keep, which could have been a possibility if Team Expert forced the fight instead. So I like Team Liquid's aggressiveness. The root comes down, and there's still a Twilight around, so Team Expert can't force anything too heavily. And so while they're down forts, they're still alive. Team Liquid having little 10 can also fight for the next Immortal. You have to be careful of the turnaround, because Bad Benny can always use the mosh pit here. So you need to be very, very cautious how you engage into this. If you chase too much, then you're in trouble. We have level 11 for Liquid and 12 and a half for Expert. And they have now taken both of the forts down. They themselves still hold their fountains on both lanes. This is something that Liquid would, of course, love to change now, especially down here at the bot lane. Bloomby at the side, making sure that they can't get ganked from behind as his team is breaking through the wall. Wall has been broken down and Team Expert answers back. Should be another turret here worth of experience. 13 is around the horizon for Expert, so Team Liquid's not forcing anything too heavily. In fact, they shouldn't. They have nowhere to retreat to. That's why they have to pull away. Had they had a fourth there, they could maybe poke a little bit more and maybe force the scenario, but with the four being gone, they'll go ahead and head top lane instead and clear out the Merc Camp and the minions, but the Immortals, they're going to be spawning soon. Yeah, 
touch of death also is going to be good for Liquid in the fights later on against the heals, especially against the Ancestral. If they can play it right, then Ancestral shouldn't really get too much value here. But the problem is really the advantage for Expert. They are, find themselves every time in a talent lead. And this is again the case. Level 13 has just hit for them, and the Immortal will be fought over with a talent advantage for Team Expert. At least the beginning of it. Another 30 seconds. Nice attempt by Vet Benny to go for Hazops, but Tassadar reacting immediately with a dimensional shift, not getting stunned out. But that could have been a kill. That could have been a kill here. Hasselhobs will be able to survive for now. The Immortal spawning in 15 seconds. A full level needed for Team Liquid to even be even on talent tiers as 13 has already been hit by an expert. And they're already stationed in the middle. They're ready to go, man. Burn down Immortals and move forward while Team Liquid is attempting to set up on the left side. Yeah, so at this point, they are just... Okay, they're, so they're racing. So Liquid has the chance of bursting the Immortal down also to a fair chunk. They are going to lose the race. Malfield is fantastic on the Immortal, but he is still relying heavily on damage over time, whereas Team Expert has a lot more burst available to them with Sonya and also Vala. But this fight right now is not something that Team Liquid is going to uh, like, because it's all about them not having the level 13. Malthiel is currently down to the bot lane, so we are seeing Liquid just getting pressured the entire time, and Expert pressuring in, trying to poke. Nick is not quite complete yet with his level 4 quest talent. He's at 70 extra damage, but it's still a fair amount of pressure they can push onto the Immortal. They're also grabbing Mercs on the right side here. With Team Liquid in a defensive position, they're able to at least get some Mercs to push on that top lane. They defend for the moment, but allow their Hungry Arrow to come back so they can go back into the scenario and keep poking here. And you'll see Nick working on the Hungry Arrow where he can. Bolts back, drops another one as well. Bad Benny opens up the window for him and then retreats. This is well played by Expert. Yeah, they're getting good poke in from the side, but also Liquid is getting closer and closer to 13, and they're going to hit it soon. They want to just just get someone onto one of the lanes, top bot, and just make sure that they soak the next talent. They also have to make sure that the camp at the top lane is not going to get too much value. This is where Malthiel splits off. But once that Expert sees that, they are starting to move in. Nice stuns from the Immortal, though. And ETC gets hit, but they can't capitalize on it. But now it's going to be a 5 versus 5 on even talents. Malthiel still hasn't taken the camp down yet, and Nick is still looking for the potential hits with his arrow, and gets them. Slow and steady here. As Nick keeps bringing it in, he is getting low on mana, so we'll have to be careful. Dark Mock and crew may make a decision here to force a fight on the next invade that comes in. If you land a combo, potentially uh, on that Vala, burst her down, get the Pulse Bomb as well as Malfield diving forward, they can fight back and work on their own Immortal, but Nick is playing safe, especially yeah. with Bad Biddy in the front. Nick is one single arrow away from hitting his quest talent, so that is going to allow them to poke even heavier and uh, helps him with the damage output, and he gets it. Okay, so quest talent completed, his level 4 is done. That helps him a lot with now the next scenario here. They're just poking away, and Liquid is really looking for a battle. They are still a level behind, but they at least have a chance now to fight for this one. They're looking for it. Bad Benny in the front side, ready to power slide. Remember, he does have that mosh pit. He has to be careful of where Malfurion is because of that Twilight Dream to cancel it out. Nick needs mana, and he goes back. He goes back to the fountain and taps. He just unleashed a full combo against Malfurion with a vault to recharge the cooldown and then go in immediately. So he has the mana now, coming back into it, and with that, they start to pressure once more. They want to win this one. And they're working on it. Blumbie in the front, takes the brunt of the Hungry Nero. Here comes Engage, goes in, no rock here. Pops is all there, jumping on him immediately, using the Polymorph as well. The Cocoon is out already though, and hits ETC. Twilight Dream, the end of Sonya as she falls. Ancestor healing is not connecting. Kirsten's on the right side. He will be able to use the Ancestor again in three seconds. Blumby does fall. At the same time on the bottom left, ETC gets burned down by Tracer. It's going to be a 4v3 on the Immortal of Team Expert. Well done. Nick needs to get away from this one. Here comes the Root, though. He's completely isolated. Can Kirsten keep him alive? The Ancestral comes through. Nearly the kill. Arrow after arrow, but he's low on mana already. Nurog, on the other hand, heals himself up once again, and Dartmok wants to chase the Malthiel dies as Kirsten just jumps in in the wolf form. They're fighting over the Immortals still. It's a four against three as we now see Nubura come back and make it even. Nubarak will be here, but so will Sonya. Also at the same time, ETC <laughs> is spawning. For 20 seconds, there will not be a mouthfeel. That level 13, that life scale from the Hungering Arrow, keeping Vala just barely alive. Oh. Nick is going for the damage here. Dark Mug barely gets away. Yeah, that was close. Ethero was about to drop him, but now Ethero himself is low, gets healed. Nice use by Rhaegar's totem here, and they are going for the Immortal. Liquid gives it up. It's a close call, but they have to give it up here. And what a fight. Six kills against three and back.
back and forth for minutes. We started this as Team Liquid had level 12. Now they have two additional levels down, 14 against 15 and a half. This is, that was super close there towards the end. Yeah, a dance of two immortals. It was quite the ballet between both of our teams, moving back and forth, playing around the hungering arrow pokes. If Malthiel doesn't fall, if they can save him, then this is a completely different scenario and Liquid would win the Immortal. But as is, we have nearly level 16 now for Expert and that might allow them to push for the keep even. They're pushing for the keep, 16 around the corner here. The turrets will help out here, the Thorough as well. So there it is, 16 has been hit. The Immortal have been down to a half of a health there already, so Dark Mock will keep with the harassment while Blundy sits in the front. But can they get some damage on the keep? Team Expert would love to force this fight and at least get a fight, but Team Liquid is not allowing for any opening to happen. The keep is low, but they, are, they move back. They move back from this one. So they're trying to move back at this point. And so far, so good. The extra talent gives them an edge, and Expert still sieges up here. Liquid is trying to move them back, and they have all their ults available. Cocoon is there, and of course, Malthiel can jump in. It's just that extra talent. 16 is such a big deal right now. Frostshot on Vala alone gives them so much CC in this fight. Nurok keeps bringing out the E as much as he can there, trying to get the Reaper's Mark on multiple people, in particular that ETC. Well, Nick just keeps working in the damage. The Hungering Arrows are going for heroes, but the multi-shot are on the waves. And, of course, that keep as it moves down to half health. They're still a half a level away from 16. Team Liquid, that is. So it decides to commit. Here we go. A Thurum moves forward. Cocoon being used. Yeah, Ancestral comes through. Kirsten was actually afraid that he might die here. He used the Ancestral early, but Ethero is low. Tries to heal himself up once again. He gets the shield and actually stays alive. The Mosh Pit is out and hits one. It's Malthiel, and they might get the kill. Indeed, they do. Not only against him, but Anubarok falls as well. ETC pays with his life for the double kill, but the ice work on Splendor is not enough to keep him alive. That's the third kill for Team Expert. Liquid is down to Trace Atasada. That was a full display of why a Town Advantage can work out for you to get a victory. Sonia was almost killed off, but her level 16, Nerves of Steel, is what kept her alive because of a Town Advantage and the double support to back her up. So now, Team Expert, with some time, they move in on the core. We will have a new wreck here in eight seconds, but the core begins to fall down to 60, down to 50. Also, Tracer getting picked up. It looks like Team Expert is going to tie up the series with a one-to-one. The ties there, Expert drop the core and take it, GG, as we are heading into game number three on an even score. No three-way tie possible anymore. Expert definitely answering in kind after losing the first map, and they looked strong here. That they did. They came out and they showed up, man. They brought out Sonya, who a throw has been very powerful on in a majority of situations. But I also loved how strong they can be when it comes to team fights, but their control in the middle of the map. That fight in the with the Immortals between both teams was a good four to five minutes, and both teams kept that tug of war going. It's just that Expert eventually got the victory. Especially the last fighter as well, Bad Benny there. And also, Ethereal keeping himself alive. That was actually fantastic by him. When he moved back in, he was about to fall. He no. said, hey, the only thing I can do is I can try and trade damage. If I get the whirlwind through, I might stay alive. He gets the shield, Rega drops it, and then at that moment, he is just able to keep himself alive long enough. ETC gets the mosh pit off. They can take Malthiel down, who would have played a huge role in that fight after level 16. And from that on, they're just saying, guys, this is not only a keep, we can actually get the core here. And as Tracer falls, there's no one who can stop them anymore. Well, we're all tied up here, and we got a series on our hands. We'll be right back with game number three.